this is my first Wilson Combat Pistol. I recently jumped on the 2011 bandwagon and after having a Staccato C, I was really curious about the Wilson Combat EDC X9. While I expected a superior level of quality as well as fit and finish, I was stunned when I first held this in my hand. The smooth, silky slide, controls I can reach, fiber optic front sight out of the box, a light, crisp trigger, and a grip design that's worth taking a minute to talk about. The three and a quarter inch barrel with the compact 15 round capacity grip is a perfect EDC combination. And to have something of this quality in something essentially the size of a Glock 43X doesn't get any better. Wilson did what few others have. They evolved the 2011 design. They thought about the potential of this design and made it greater. With great prices and a serious concern for quality ammo, True Shot Gun Club is my go-to for ammo, and it's the reason I'm happy to have them as a sponsor of this channel. If you're getting some range time in, make sure to restock with True Shot Gun Club and tell them Shenanigans sent you. Thanks for stopping by. Welcome back, those of you checking in for another video. I really appreciate all of you. Do me a solid though, hit that subscribe button, and if you like what you see here, hit the like button as well, and don't be afraid to leave some comments. So let's talk about the new Wilson Combat EDC X9 with the three and quarter inch barrel. But first, safety check. Let's start by looking at the overall size of the pistol. Shockingly, it's practically the same size as the Glock 43X. The Glock 43X is coming in at 1.10 inches and the Wilson at 1.35 due to the Wilson having a double stack magazine. Height and overall length are really close. The width is the only thing that really sets these two apart. The Wilson Combat website will tell you it's one and a quarter inches wide, but that's at the safety, which is the widest point overall, but it's not 1.4 inches wide in the grip. However, a Glock 19 is 1.34 inches wide, which is a negligible 0 0.01 inches narrower than the Wilson at 1.35 inches wide. So if you're someone who enjoys the overall size of a Glock 19 grip and the width isn't something that's an issue, you'll probably find this very comfortable and concealable. Weight really is what separates these two the most. Unloaded, the Wilson weighs in at 27.6 ounces, and the Glock 19 comes in at 21.52 ounces. While it doesn't sound like a big difference, you can feel it, or maybe it's how the weight is distributed, but if you held this up in one hand and a Glock 19 in the other, you'd notice a difference. That being said, the Wilson doesn't weigh too much, in my opinion. I think after a whole day of carrying, especially if you're being active, you'll most likely be rather relieved to be back home and taking it off your belt, but with a good belt and holster, you'll be fine. The Wilson does have a nice rounded design to the grip, which gives you a smooth transition from the back of the pistol around to the side panels, which makes it really comfortable to hold onto, and it maintains a rather small overall circumference. And they do this while giving you 15 rounds in the magazine. Let me touch on the magazine since I mentioned it. They are proprietary, so you do have to get your mags from Wilson. However, they are reasonably and competitively priced. As of the making of this video, Wilson is selling them for $44.95, and they're currently on sale for $35.96. You can't get mags that cheap for some of your more common pistols. One thing you may have already noticed is that there is no beaver tail safety, like you would see on most 1911s and modernized 2011s. Personally, I prefer it this way. The grip is a lot more comfortable like this, and the absence of the safety is really what allowed Wilson to have this nice rounded grip design. Without the beaver tail, it does feel like you can get a higher purchase on the grip. And of course, the higher you can grip and bring that bore axis down, the less muzzle flip you'll experience, which in turn allows you to shoot faster and put more accurate follow-up shots on target. And it really helps make practice more enjoyable. And if this grip texture hasn't caught your eye yet, let me bring it to your attention. I was originally interested in the SFX9 with the three and a quarter inch barrel, but I wasn't really sure about the grip texture. I've held aluminum framed guns that didn't have great texture and they feel like they slide around, like I can't clamp down on it and keep it in place. So I was a bit hesitant, especially considering I haven't had the opportunity to hold one. When I saw this pistol, I was a lot more confident that I could get a grip that felt sturdy with the grip panels and they don't disappoint. If you look closely, you can see the grip panels have a deep aggressive texture. But look at the texture in the frame itself. This is where I was still maybe a little bit skeptical, but these are actually quite deep and aggressive themselves. 
I really do feel them getting into my hand, and my grip feels very secure, but in a pleasant way. And the front strap has a little more depth and aggressiveness to it than the back strap. Honestly, I can't say enough about this grip. From the texture to the design, it really feels like it melts into your hand. The soft, subtle curves and overall roundness of the grip really make it the most comfortable pistol I've ever held. If the SFX9, which is the full aluminum model without the grip panels, feels like the front and back of this pistol, then getting a strong grip on that model won't be a problem. So if you had been eyeing it and on the fence about it, there's my thoughts. Speaking of the back strap, you can pop this off and replace it with the larger back strap available from Wilson Combat. Or if you're ordering one directly from them, you can request a larger back strap for those of you with larger hands. As is the case with 1911 or 2011 designs, and while this doesn't have the grip safety, it does have the manual thumb safety. This model having only the left side for right-handed shooters. If you order from Wilson, you can have that safety come ambidextrous, and there's models in the wild you can find that are ambidextrous for you lefties, or if you just prefer it. This safety is really nice though. It's got a really smooth feel. You can hear it has an audible click when moved on or off, but it feels like it glides from one position to the other. This is the smaller concealed carry EDC size, but you can order a larger one if you're doing a custom build through Wilson. That being said, I've still found it easy to manipulate, and I've been doing dry fire practice with it, and I've not missed a single swipe to turn it on or off. The rest of the controls on the pistol are very easy to reach. The pistol feels more like a SIG P320X carry in my hand than it does something like a staccato. With the staccato, I couldn't reach the slide release with my thumb. It was just too far forward. With the Wilson, it's not real close, but it's close enough that I can reach it with minor grip manipulation, which really isn't any more than I would move my hand to do a mag change. Speaking of mag changes, the magazine release is easy to reach, and it actually stands out pretty far, and I don't have to adjust my grip any more than I would to operate the magazine release on something like a Glock, or a SIG P320, or my CZ P10C. So for my hand size, my requirements to reach it are pretty normal. The mag release does have a very positive and springy feel to it. It's easy to operate and is quick to drop the mag right out. Though I say it's easy to operate, it's not soft and it does require intent when you push on it. So you won't have to worry about accidentally dropping the mag, say if your grip is too tight against it. And let me tell you about this trigger. This is easily the best trigger I've ever felt on a pistol. Better than the staccato, better than any 1911 I've handled. This trigger is refined. There's a short take up and then a wall, but it doesn't feel like a break, like you're releasing the sear. It's just one smooth, short motion all the way through until the hammer drops once you hit that wall. And it does have a very short reset. That was it. Some of you might say that's too light for a carry pistol, but what this does is it helps reduce those small but critical errors in trigger press that you might find on a striker fired pistol, which could be five pounds or more. Extra weight requires extra force, and this force can translate into jerking or slapping the trigger, uh, sympathetic grip response from your hand causing you to jerk your sights off target, among others. A light, crisp trigger like this helps reduce those errors altogether aiding with overall accuracy, especially for rapid follow-up shots. Adhere to firearm safety rules and you'll be fine. Altogether though, this is an absolutely stunning firearm. And in my opinion, it's the perfect size for a concealed defensive pistol. It has a 15 round magazine, or you can use the 18 round EDC X9 magazine, or carry it around as a backup mag. It maintains a traditional 1911 look and feel and size, while offering more capacity without being too big. I love holding this pistol in my hand. Everything about it has been scrutinized, thought over, considered, and refined, and I don't know how much better it could get. As I said before, I think this is a perfectly sized pistol for an everyday carry. It has a rail so you can throw your lights or lasers on it, or if you're part of the Mantis family, you can throw your Mantis training device on there. And if you have one, check out the Shenanigans group on the Mantis app. Come join me and let's build skills and get proficient together and even compete for bragging rights by being at the top of the list. If you do have an EDC X9 or an SFX9 or are interested in picking one up, 
I'll recommend the folks over at Legacy Firearms for a holster. While my go-to is Holster Co. LLC, and if you use code SHENANIGANS at Holster Co., you can save on your holster purchase. The guys over at Legacy Firearms are my go-to backup, and they happen to make a Kydex holster for the EDC SFX line of Wilson Combat Pistols. The quality from Legacy Firearms is great, and it fits this pistol really well. I wasn't able to find anywhere else that offered a Kydex holster for the Wilson, but these guys came through. I also like that you can grab additional grip panels and switch them out. It really adds a layer of customization and personalization to a pistol that doesn't otherwise offer these options. VZ Grips does offer replacement grip panels, and all you do is put your pin in there, pop your backstrap off, and they slide in and out. There's no screws or any attachments required. I really think this is going to take the place as my new everyday without a doubt, but that's just my opinion and I'm just some guy on the internet, so let me know your thoughts in the comments. What do you think of the new EDC X9 3 quarter inch? Are you even on the 2011 bandwagon? Would you choose this over a staccato? Leave some comments, I love all of them. And if you're still here, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button for me so we can keep this channel growing. I appreciate you checking out this video, I'll catch you guys on the next one.